So critical conclusions that I hope are clear. Number one, the Bible is divine. Humans did not create this book. The Bible is breathed out by God himself. Number two, the Bible is true. We can trust it. The sum of your word is truth. Every one of your righteous rules endures forever. Psalm 119, verse 160. Number three, the Bible is clear. We can understand it. Every single one of us can understand the word of God. This word is not too hard for you. It's not far off. It's near to you. It's in your mouth and your heart, so you can do it. Number four, the Bible is sufficient. It is indeed the only book we need. It is profitable, 2 Timothy 3, profitable to say the least. And ultimately, the Bible is good. It is worth giving our lives for. It's worth giving our lives for. So those critical conclusions then lead to these final exhortations, all based on this picture in Nehemiah chapter 8. So we read it earlier. Uh, this, this good to, we read part of it earlier. All the people, just follow along with me in that first verse, gathered as one man in the square before the water gate, and they told Ezra the scribe, bring the book of the law of Moses, the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, and all could understand what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he read it, read from it, facing the square before the water gate, followed us from early morning until midday, in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of the people were attentive to the book of the law from early morning till midday just reading from the book of the law. Ezra the scribe stood on a wooden platform that had made for the purpose. Beside him stood a bunch of people. We can't pronounce their names. And Ezra opened the book. This is the part we read earlier. All the people stand up, start shouting, amen, amen. You skip down to pass the next list of names. They read from the book, from the law of God clearly, gave the sense so the people could understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest and scribe, and Levites who taught the people, said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Can you picture that? It's just reading the word, and they're just weeping. They're realizing their sin, like weeping. They sinned against God. They're convicted. He said to them, go your way. Eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. What a picture. Yes, we've sinned, but God is gracious. It's a day of celebration. We're reading his word. We're coming back to his word. This is a good day. The Levites called and all the people saying, Be quiet, this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and send portions and to make great rejoicing because they had understood the words that were declared to them. Oh, the word of God and the people of God. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's receive this word humbly in our lives and in the church. Let's crave it. Bring out the book. We want the book. We want the book. Let's receive this word humbly. Let's receive this word. Revere this word humbly. Let's receive this word continually. Let's Surely, the majority of your week, four days a week, is worth, this word is worth that kind of time. If not more. So just start there. Receive this word continually. And believe this word completely. Let's believe what this word says about our lives, how our lives belong to him, for him to do with and in and through them whatever he pleases. God, help us to believe what this word says about our lives. So just, ah, are you living in obedience to this word? Like, are you living in obedience to this word? Are there areas that you're in your life right now that are direct disobedience to this word, neglecting commands in this word? And as that conviction comes, I just challenge, I encourage you, repent. Live in disobedience to this word at great peril to your life and the lives of others around you. Live in obedience and believe, obey what this word says about our lives. Our lives, believe what this word says about the lost. If this book is true, then billions of people right now are on a road that leads to an eternal hell. You believe that, it'll change the way you live. And for that matter, let's believe what this word says about the poor. Whoever gives to the poor will not want. He who hides his eyes will get many a curse. Let's believe this word completely. Let's obey this word confidently. And let's proclaim this word urgently. I love Acts 19. Uh, 
It explains how Paul preached in Ephesus for two years. And I want you to listen to the result at the end of the passage. So, well, just go to the, start at the beginning. He entered the synagogue and for three months spoke boldly, reasoning and persuading them about the kingdom of God. But when some became stubborn and continued in unbelief, speaking evil of the way before the congregation, he withdrew from them and took the disciples with him, reasoning daily in the hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years so that all the residents of Asia, listen to this, all the residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. That's quite a statement. Like all the residents of Asia, really? Like, I lead an international missions organization. It would be great to be able to report after a couple of years. Uh, well, we got Asia covered. <laughs> yeah, all the residents of Asia. Yeah, so next year we're going to do Africa. Uh, you know, we'll work our way. I mean, soon we're going to Antarctica. I think that's all that'll be left. Like, we have it all. So, I mean, re- really? But here's the beauty it wasn't because Paul went all throughout Asia with the word. It's because people went all around Asia with the word. They'd hear the word taught in Ephesus and they'd scatter from that city in all kinds of different places and the word was spreading all throughout Asia. And that, the reason I put that at the end of this guide is because that is my prayer for 50, 60,000 people tonight. I prayed that you would love this word more than you did six, seven hours ago. And that from this gathering, here, wherever you are, that 50, 60,000 people would scatter from this gathering, studying this word like your life depends on it, because it does. And you would scatter from this gathering, proclaiming this word like others' lives depend on it, because they do.